this is Jeff Nager with AMD World Championship of Custom Bike Building. And I'm super excited today because we have a breakout, uh, a product launch from Zero Engineering. I've got Ben with me with uh, the new Type 9 motorcycle. And uh, Ben, what's the inspiration of this bike? American cruising style. We're building a bike so that you can actually go for the long haul. So, since you're out of uh, Las Vegas, you want to be able to get to LA and back without uh, killing your back. Yes, exactly, yeah. So that's why we've got some suspension in the back this time. All right. So uh, I understand that um, you've been to Japan a number of times, and there's certainly a, a Harley vibe out there. Talk a little bit about that. It's huge over there. They love Harleys over there. I mean, there are so many companies exporting bikes to Japan, it's ridiculous, so. And, um, uh, this is the, the low, lean look that the Japanese like that we're starting to see. Yeah, it's like really taken over. Like it's been big in Japan for a long time. You could say this is Japanese style. And now there are more American companies and more American custom shops that are starting to make this kind of work. All right. Well, we're going to start in the back of this bike. And the reason why is because when you look at it from afar, it looks like a hardtail. Yeah. But it's not. And there's some... Uh, if you will, some uh, F1 engineering uh, technology in it. Talk about that. Um, we have some engineers that worked on the F1 uh, part making crews, and we started work with them, and they developed our rear suspension here, this multi-link suspension with the monoshock. It's, it's nice. It's really responsive. It's good. Now, you were talking to me last night about it, and it, the actual suspension works inside the frame. How does that, can you give me a little more information about that? Or correct me, if you will. No, it works kind of within the frame, yeah. So we have, back here we have our multi-link suspension, we have the monoshock that's adjustable under the seat, and instead of pivoting like on the back or having a large heavy cage, what it does is it like compounds on itself. I don't know, it's complicated. Anyways, it works really well and it gives more travel with less space and less moving parts. Like there's not, a, when your tire is going up and down, there's just a little bit of metal that has to move. So it's really quick. It's really responsive. Very good. So I think that uh, all the people out there really want to know is uh, when you're on the bike, how smooth is the rear, rear, rear ride? It's nice. It's not sloppy. It's actually really tight and it's really crisp and you feel like you have a lot of control. It's good. Very good. Well, I also noticed on this bike we're running big tires. That's part of the look too. That's, that's the Japanese style, the bigger tires. The bigger vintage tires, yeah. So we've got the, we got the old Cokers here. Wow. And uh, how, do, how do those perform on the road? They perform great. They just perform like modern tires, except they look old. Cool. Now, um, one, uh, another aspect of this bike is the uh, signature exhaust pipe. Talk about that uh, pipe and how it reflects the, the Japanese uh, Harley-Davidson lifestyle. Uh, Japanese are good at making pipes and they really like them in the middle. So we made a couple bikes with high pipes, but this is our stock exhaust here and it comes through the middle and we have some nice fun uh, brass details in back and in Europe we even have it, it looks the exact same but meets all their standards like, I don't know, it's a really nice pipe setup. It's a very nice pipe setup and uh, the pipe flows into uh, an Evo style s and uh, um, talk about your this engine and some um, options you have in this bike. Um, well, this is our stock engine that comes with it. We have a blacked out SNS and uh, 96, but we go all the way up to like 124, whatever you want to stick in there. So you, know, you got a lot of choices. If you go and look through s and catalog, we can put pretty much whatever you want in this bike. So you're a custom production manufacturer. This is a, a custom production bike. You can get the exact one or you can make some uh, choices for yourself to uh, customize it. Yeah, like uh, your own paint job comes with the bike, uh, like your engine chop uh, choices, depending on the price, comes with the bike. You can kind of pick your air cleaner and stuff, so you can modify it to fit your own. And it's surprising, like we've had bikes come out that look totally different, and it was just like a stock bike, so. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool when that happens, isn't it? It's nice working with customers, because then they have their own taste, and you end up working in a shop and making something new, and you didn't even expect to make it, and it looks good, so it's, it's fun. So you have choices with, um, uh, engine, primary, front end, uh, probably a thousand different choices. There's a lot of ways to put it together, yeah. All right. So let's take a, a moment and talk about Zero Engineering. Uh, give us a snapshot of the company. 
Uh, the company is owned by a huge company in Japan called Plot, and they have a crazy amount of experience making racing parts, motorcycle parts, car parts. So that's why they have a huge focus on engineering everything really, really precisely. And that's how come they have the R&D capability to make a bike like this. This took two years of R&D to make. They test rode it, they made several different versions of it, they rode it in the rain, they put thousands of miles on it. Like they were completely serious about making the best bike they could. Well, it's funny you should say that. Uh, contrast it with some of the, the custom production American manufacturers who, who don't do the QA as, as significantly as what you're talking about. Well, also, if you're making something like a rigid, it might not take quite as much engineering as when you're making something like this. So it's on a whole nother level. It is a whole nother level. Um, I noticed that we're running carbureted uh, SNS. Yeah, here in the States, we got the carbs. Uh, if it's, you're in Europe or Japan, we have fuel injected models. They got the fuel pump mounted in the tank. It's pretty high tech. Very cool. And talk about the primary. Is that a Revero? Uh, this is a Revero parts, but we make our own primary uh, plate and our own. We have like a guard that goes over it, but most of the stuff that we send out, we have like the open primary. So. And you've got options with the tranny? Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of choices. Uh, you know, Harley, uh, Baker, and uh, Revero Primo. So. Very nice. I like the, the tank. Uh, it looks like, uh, since it is a cruiser and you can cruise with this, it looks like it'll get some miles down the road. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think these average like 45 miles a gallon, and this is a little over a three gallon tank. So we also make like hardtail bags, and they have like an extra spare tank on the back just in case. So, yeah. So if you're going, you can go. You can go as far as you want, yeah. Well, I love the uh, front end. Talk about the uh, Springer. Our, we make our own Springer, uh, and we completely redesigned like the typical Springer from the 50s from Harley, except now we have got ball bearings in the front and like the rockers. The energy from the rockers goes straight up the fork. It used to be mounted on the side, you know, eventually it would kind of break. It's a, like a kind of weak point, but these are like as sturdy as it gets. They're built like a tank. It's a really nice fork. They are very cool looking, and um, I, I love the uh, very small Speedo. And the hand controls are very sanitary as well. Yeah, they're really tight, tucked in there. We don't have big things sticking off our handlebars. And it's kind of interesting riding because it's like clean. You just see road, so. Well, we're excited that you brought this bike out to introduce to the public. Uh, what kind of response have you gotten? Everyone loves it. Like, we're about to do a tour of the West Coast and hopefully the East Coast pretty soon too to give uh, test rides whoever wants to try it. And the people that have ridden this, they've loved it and they've had none but praise, so that's really good to hear. All right. Well, if somebody was looking at this bike and was interested in something for their garage, what's the web address, what's the telephone number? Uh, it's a zero engcom Z-E-R-O-E-N-G.com, and the phone number is 702-798-7504, and you can talk to me there. All right. Well, there it is, the 411 on Zero Engineering. Ben, thanks so very much. Yeah. Uh, have a great show. Hey, thanks. It's been fun. All right, third place in the production manufacturer class goes to Zero, Zero Engineering with their Type 6 from Las Vegas, Nevada with an SNS 96 cubic inch drivetrain. If Neil or Robin didn't mention it, we have 11 different engine drivetrain configurations this year and a million different variations on those. Zero Engineering, please come to the stage. Here they come. Here they come. Go hide it. If you get a chance, check out these bikes. These guys make a really amazing production bike. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you very much. And the girls have your trophy for you. Third place, production manufacturing. Thank you.